Horizon Forbidden West is without question one of the most anticipated games right now. The first game was awesome, Gorilla has a great track record, and what they've shown us so far looks pretty incredible. I have little doubt that when the game comes out, it's going to be a kick-ass title, a great game for the PlayStation family of consoles. But unfortunately, the game is currently marred with some controversy due to PlayStation's business model. Now, this game was delayed from holiday 2001 to February 2022. That's fine. I say the devs should take all the time they need, but the launch date is certainly fast approaching. It's just a couple of months away. And with that, we're finally starting to see pre-orders for the game go up. So in this blog post published on September 2nd, 2021, PlayStation introduced the various editions you can get, as well as how upgrading from the PlayStation 4 version to the PlayStation 5 version will work as this will be a cross-generation title. So scrolling down here, you'll find that alongside the standard edition on PlayStation 4, which is $60 and the one on PlayStation 5, which is $70, you've got the Digital Deluxe Edition, you've got the Special Edition, the Collector's Edition, and the Regala Edition. And if you go to the game's pre-order page, you'll find all of the pricing. So you've got, again, PS5 Standard Edition, $70, PS4 Standard Edition, $60, the Digital Deluxe Edition is $80, and then scrolling down here, you'll find the Special Edition for PlayStation 5, which comes with the disc, that's $80, the special edition for PlayStation 4 is $10 less at $70, then you've got the $200 collector's edition, and finally, the more expensive Regala edition, which is $260. And obviously, each edition comes with a variety of both digital and physical goodies. So the digital deluxe edition, for example, comes with all this stuff, some skins, some in-game resources and whatnot, digital art book soundtrack, the stuff you might expect. The special edition is sort of a lesser version of the digital deluxe, though it is. It does come with a physical disc, and it basically comes with a steelbook case, a mini art book, and includes an outfit and a spear. Then you've got the collector's edition, which comes with a giant statue alongside a few other goodies. And then the Regal edition comes with an even mightier statue and a few more goodies. Now, as for where all this fits in the upgrade process from PS4 to PS5, well, they're not doing any kind of upgrade program. Instead, what they're doing is locking the upgrade behind the more expensive editions. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of this page, you'll find a note here that reads, for players looking to have access to both the PS4 and PS5 versions of Horizon Forbidden West, please purchase the digital deluxe collectors or regala editions. Dual entitlement does not apply to the standard and special editions. Dual entitlement being the name given to this program that allows you to gain access to both last gen and current gen versions of this title. So what this means, ladies and gentlemen, is that in order to get that free next gen upgrade, you'll have to shell out at least $80. This is the least expensive way to get both the PS4 and PS5 versions. You could also shell out $200 for the collector's edition or $260 for the regal edition. Those also come with both PS4 and PS5 version, but obviously those are limited in quantity and not everyone can afford to spend $200, $260 just for one game, they'll just want to spend that standard $60, maybe $70 for the PS5 version in the hopes of just getting the base price and spend as little as they have to. But you combine the existence of all of these different editions where some allow for that free upgrade, some don't. On top of the fact that PlayStation 4 players who will eventually upgrade to a PlayStation 5 are being forced to shell out an additional $20 than they normally would if they want to future-proof themselves, and you've got a situation that people are not pleased by at all. Especially with how consumer-friendly the competition Xbox is being with their smart delivery program that offers a no-frill solution for players to just purchase one version of the game and you get it across all Xbox family of consoles that that support the title. And for first party releases, Xbox has committed to ensuring that every first party release will take advantage of smart delivery. And as an additional option, you've got Game Pass, which for a reasonable monthly fee, you gain access to a whole library of games where first party games are released 
on launch day. And beyond Xbox, plenty of other publishers and developers have opted to ensuring that people get a free next-gen upgrade. And making optics worse is that last year, prior to PlayStation 5's launch, Sony and PlayStation promised that Horizon Forbidden West would include a free next-gen upgrade from PS4 to PS5. Recall that in this blog post published back in September 16th, 2020, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan provided the following statement. We know that the PS4 community will transition to PS5 at different times, and we're happy to announce PS4 versions of some of our exclusives, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Sackboy A Big Adventure, and Horizon Forbidden West will also launch on PlayStation 4. While these three games were designed to take advantage of PlayStation 5 and its unique next-gen features like the ultra-high-speed SSD and DualSense controller, PS4 owners will also be able to enjoy these experiences when they launch. The PS4 digital versions of launch games include a free upgrade on both PS5 consoles, while the PS4 disc versions of these games include a free upgrade on the PS5 with Ultra HD Blu-ray disk drive. So a straight up promise that no matter which version you get, physical or digital, Horizon Forbidden West will be receiving a free upgrade from PS4 to PS5. It is explicitly stated in this paragraph. And now fast forward to today and we're looking at a scenario where not only are we not getting a free next-gen upgrade, with the next-gen upgrade being locked by more expensive editions that will force you to pay at least $80, they also couldn't fulfill their promise that both physical and digital editions of the game would allow for a next-gen upgrade. If you look at the editions that do offer dual entitlement, you'll notice that they're only for digital editions of the game. The two versions that come with a physical disc, the standard and special editions, do not offer dual entitlement, whereas the three editions that only come with a digital copy of the game, the Digital Deluxe Edition, the Collector's Edition, and the Regal Editions are the only ones offering dual entitlement. So for the many out there who prefer the physical medium and were planning to purchase the physical edition of the PlayStation 5 and were hoping to get a physical edition that you could upgrade to PlayStation 5, you're out of options. Your best bet is to purchase a physical edition for PlayStation 4 and then purchase a physical edition for PlayStation 5. You gotta pay for the game twice, essentially. Your other option is to buy a PlayStation 5 version and keep your fingers crossed that PS5s will become readily available at some point in the near future, which near future isn't looking likely. All of this comes during a time when PlayStation 5s are damn near impossible to find and purchase and obtain unless you go through scalpers. Because they're so hard to find, a lot of folks will decide to play Horizon Forbidden West on PlayStation 4 until they're able to find a PlayStation 5 and then make that upgrade. And these people will be forced and strong-armed to pay more for this game simply because of the low supply of PlayStation 5s. They'll have to, again, spend at least $80, whereas if you are among the lucky few who managed to obtain a PlayStation 5, you'd have to spend only $70 for the standard edition. And all of this comes shortly after Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut faced some backlash because of its business model and how the upgrade program worked, with players having to essentially pay $20 to gain access to the Iki Island expansion, and that's fine. But the fact that a $10 fee applied to upgrade from PS4 to PS5, and the fact that initial adopters who paid $60 for the original Ghost of Tsushima would essentially have to pay an extra $30, $90, to get to Director's Cut PlayStation 5, whereas people who have not purchased the game before would only have to pay $70 for PS5 Director's Cut if they're just buying that. All of that culminated in negative optics for what was otherwise a stellar game. And now with Horizon Forbidden West, they don't even have an upgrade program. They've just straight up locked the accessibility of both PS4 and PS5 versions, this dual entitlement thing behind more expensive editions, and if you don't purchase those specific editions, you'll essentially have to buy the game again on PlayStation 5. And if the name Dual Entitlement sounds familiar to you, it's because it's the exact same terminology coined and used by EA for their EA Sports titles like Madden NFL and FIFA. The scheme that Horizon Forbidden West is pulling right now, locking next-gen upgrades behind certain more expensive editions, is a scheme that both EA and 2K pulled, and with Horizon Forbidden West, it would seem as though PlayStation took inspiration from their business model. With EA's dual entitlement program, recall how the first iteration of it involved people having to purchase 
the current gen version by a certain day and then redeem the next gen version by a certain day. They essentially had a smart delivery like program, but with time limits that was very negatively received, so they pulled back on that. But then the following year with Madden 22 and FIFA 22, they came back with a more egregious scheme where dual entitlement would only be available for those who purchase the FIFA 22 Ultimate Edition, which is the more expensive $100 edition. Another company who pulled exactly the same thing was 2K with NBA 2K21, when its free next-gen upgrade was strictly locked behind its $100 Mamba Forever Edition, and this one is made worse by the fact that they're exploiting Kobe Bryant's death. And this is also a game that had multiple editions and you needed this confusing chart to know what's in what and what offered what. Horizon Forbidden West business model is straight up just replicating what EA and 2K have done before, except that the edition you have to purchase to get that free upgrade is $80 instead of $100. But with Horizon promises were made a year ago, it was strictly stated that Horizon Forbidden West would launch on PlayStation 4 and include a free upgrade on both PS5 consoles, both physical and digital editions. That's no longer the case. Is it really worth it, Sony and PlayStation, to draw all this negative PR, to gain all this negative attention and do potential long-term damage when we're looking at a game that's still gonna sell millions and millions of copies, at least more than 10 million copies, and you're still gonna make boatloads of money. If you're gonna tout catchphrases like play has no limit or for the players, actually live up to that, especially with your first party releases. And look, I'm sure some people argue that this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened in terms of gaming business models. This game won't have microtransactions and loot boxes and all that, but just because we haven't gotten to the worst version of a business model or monetization scheme doesn't mean we shouldn't stop certain trends that are developing. And with Sony, it feels like they're more and more pushing how much they can get away with with cross-generation releases. And I'd rather call this out now and stop it in its tracks now before it evolves into something uglier. The same way that I criticized EA for their shitty dual entitlement program, and the same way that I criticized 2K for locking a free next gen upgrade behind the $100 Mamba Edition, I'm gonna criticize Sony for essentially attempting to do the exact same thing with Horizon Forbidden West, and I can only hope that there's enough feedback and backlash and discourse out there that Sony's looking at this and going, maybe this isn't worth it, maybe we'll scale back on this. Much like how they did before when they faced tons of backlash for Out of the Blue, saying that they were gonna shut down the PS3 and PlayStation Vita stores, and then they reversed that decision when they realized just how many people felt like they were negatively affected by this. Hopefully something similar will happen here where PlayStation will respond to the current backlash, reverse their position, and implement a better upgrade program. In the meantime though, this is one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the Horizon Forbidden West dual entitlement program. Is it something that you can tolerate or are you like me where to me this is unacceptable? Uh, how big of a deal is this for you? Share your thoughts below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.